know, and I was looking for these. Cause I went to the buy no more. I just used the ones that come with the cell phone. I was not gonna pay not eighty dollars for no more beat by Trey. I thought, thought my uh, son had stole it. I go in my son's bedroom and find a whole lot of my stuff. I got one that's in college. He looked, you know, going in my closet, my cologne missing, you know, drawers. I'm like, okay, I'm just kidding. Oh, y'all come on in. Thank y'all for coming. We should have got some of the legs from the number two usher board. Because, <laughs> you know, they don't let you in, especially when they're praying. Do they let y'all in at your grandma's church? They don't let, they, hey, don't they be mean? The one be at the back that you try to open the door and go in? She be holding shoot. <laughs> like, are you doing security or what? All right, ATL, on behalf of AT&T, welcome to 28 Days. And this is my uh, first year hosting the, uh, hosting the speaker series, and I'm really excited about it. Y'all excited to be here? I'm excited too, man. I'm really excited to be part of such an uh, inspiring campaign. For five years now, at and has been using 28 days to give a nod to the past while celebrating the future possibilities in our community. Now we got to, um, now we got to give it up, uh, give it up one more time for at and Make some noise. They really We've been on tour all over the country. And I'm talking about we got a great group of speakers this month, man, and I'll tell y'all, and uh, at and is putting black history to the forefront, and I am so excited being from Birmingham, Alabama. Anybody from Alabama? Woo! Alabama in the house! Oh, okay. Now, uh, that's right. That's right, Alabama State University, okay? That's in the hall, sixth floor. Hey. Elevator broke. Elevator broke, for real. <laughs> My legs strong walking up and down all those steps. But uh, I'm telling y'all, man, black history is awesome, man. Uh, I, I hate that they don't teach it in schools and still recognize it in schools like they used to. I know they mention it or whatever, but, you know, back when I was in school, uh, black history was a big deal, you know, uh, growing up in uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And I'm gonna tell y'all something, it's hard, it, it's hard to know where you're going and respect everything that you got and everything you got going for you if you don't know that somebody made a sacrifice where you can have the opportunity that you have. You know, we can't be getting on these buses fighting, you go to YouTube, you see video, I'm just keeping it real, video of the people fighting and stuff on the bus or whatever and don't know that a lot of people went to jail just when you could ride the bus and stuff. And, and, and if y'all ever get a chance, man, y'all come to my city, Birmingham, Alabama, and go to the second largest, other than Atlanta, the second largest civil rights museum in the country, and you will see some stuff, man, that will blow your mind. Because, you know, you would really appreciate uh, your heritage and, and the sacrifice that people made for you. And uh, so that's why I'm acting. I'm so glad to be a proud, because at and don't, they don't have to do this. They, they don't, you know, nobody have to do it. But, but, but just for a company that big, to think about uh, our heritage and our people uh, and celebrate black like history, like it means a lot to me. So, uh, shout out to at and for that. I'm excited! This look like the uh, church version of the Apollo Theater. This, this look like the opera. Kind of remind you the opera a little bit, don't you? All right, so all right, before we get started, I would like to introduce at and Vice President of diverse markets. And I want y'all to show this lady some love. This lady worked hard, helping putting all this stuff together, man. And she is a sister, and she is good. She, when I bring her out, she kind of remind you of that auntie, that auntie that uh, did finish college. <laughs> let me just, let me just. You know that one auntie that did finish college and her house clean, <laughs> and she, she the Facebook police. She go to everybody, all the teenagers' Facebook page and say, take that down right now. And stop taking pictures. If you want to take a picture in the bathroom, make sure you clean the counter. <laughs> she is awesome. And, I, and it's been a pleasure working with her. I want y'all to give it up. Show your, show your love. Give an official at and work on the Miss Jennifer Jones, y'all. Come on. Come on. I can't hear you. Good evening, Atlanta. Good evening. Ricky is a fool. He is a fool. So I told my family the way he described me, and they said, mm-hmm. 
That's, that's it, that's absolutely it. But AT&T, we are delighted to be able to bring this program to Atlanta. For us, the future is as important as the past. In fact, unless we understand and leverage the past, our future can't be as bright as it could be. Did you guys know that black folk talk, text, and use social media just about more than anybody else? But what are we talking and texting and social mediaing about? So we hope you hear something tonight that thought that starts the thought process about how we can use the technology that we consume so much every day to move ourselves forward, both as individually, our family, and of course our community. You're gonna hear some good stuff, some entertainment tonight. We just want you to relax, sit back, enjoy yourself, and remember, all things are possible. That's why at AT&T we believe in rethinking possible. Thank you. Just now, and now that I know how to do it, it, they don't even do it no more. Ain't that something? <laughs> ain't that something? As soon as you learn how to do the Dougie, they ain't doing it no more, but I still do it because I got to represent. My, my daughters took me upstairs and said, Come on, just come in my room and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's all in the legs. <laughs> Okay, do the best you can. That's the old folks, Dougie. You got one? Oh! Yeah! Thank you, Bill. Boy, I love that thing. I have, my, I have my kids doing it to country music, too. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I'm going to post a video on my... Uh, follow me on Twitter, I'm going to post a video. <laughs> I have my kids doing the Dougie to uh, Glenn Campbell's Southern Night. Southern Night. So make sure y'all check out the pictures and videos uh, all, um, in all of the stops. Because last week we was in Raleigh, and the week before that we was in Washington, D.C. at the Historical Lincoln Theater, right next to Ben's Chili Bowl. Next week we're going to be in Detroit. Detroit in the house. That is Atlanta up north. <laughs> Only difference is, guys on, guys on, you know, holler at women like, hey, Shaw, come put your number, come put your number on the phone, Shaw. I said, what? <laughs> All right, so make sure y'all put this in your phone right here. Thebridge.att.net, okay? Thebridge.att.net. Or on Facebook at 20 8 days. 20 8 days, all right? Y'all get that? thebridge.att.net or on Facebook at 20-8days. Y'all so wonderful. Y'all, I just love y'all. Look at these people putting, uh, putting the notes in their phone. Or you can find it on the back of your program. <laughs> All that for nothing, Ricky, really? Really? So y'all make sure y'all join this conversation and check in on uh, check in on 4S Square hashtag on Twitter. All right, so that's the Twitter. It's on the back. It's on the back of the program. It's on. There you go. It's on the back of the program. 4S Square hashtag 
on Twitter and uh, it's all on the back of your program. So make sure y'all keep up with your program and you just never know. You got to stay involved. We got to keep you involved. So listen, uh, we have a great group of speakers uh, on this tour, man. It's been uh, wonderful. Uh, one time, MC Light is in the building. I can't hear y'all. All right. That's black. That's almost black history itself. That's my favorite female MC, man. Y'all remember when MC Light first came out, man, when she had that mushroom? What? Had that asymmetrical bob? What? We was in high school, but we thought, we're like, what? MC Light? Come on, man. Y'all Y'all remember you had that little magazine, and you take a picture out and hang it up on the wall, along with the jet beauty of the week? Look at her, she knows she, you should you good? You good, she ain't smiling unless she, everything is no. <laughs> you, you okay? Okay, I'm making sure that everything is no. You know, you had one of them every time. No, I don't remember. You don't remember MC Light? Okay, there you go, okay, that's what I'm saying. I did say it right the first time, you remember MC Light, right? <laughs> Oh, we got some more, but y'all come on in. Uh, the first row on the back is reserved for our pastors. <laughs> Go ahead, sit down, man. I'm just playing. playing. Y'all come on, sit down. Come on, man, sit down, man. How you doing? All right, man. I like that sweater. I like that sweater. Bruce Bruce said, it looks good on you. <laughs> y'all dirty. Y'all come on in, ladies. How y'all doing? Y'all good? All right, don't fall, cause we will laugh. <laughs> After we see that you're okay. Y'all, thank y'all for coming. What's that, everybody good? Y'all give it up for our visitors. <laughs> yes. Y'all ready? I love y'all, y'all crunk. Y'all ready to have a good time? Yeah. I like this little room. This is a good place to do a little, a little comedy show. Got a little bar back there and everything. <laughs> hey, last, uh, uh, last week, man, we was in uh, Raleigh last week, Elvana tore it up, man, and then we was at uh, Washington, D.C., man, we had a really, really good time. And D.C. in the building? Yeah! What? Yeah. Man, we had so much more. We, hey, we was playing that Chuck Brown. What y'all know about that? Wind me up, Chuck, sweet Teresa. Wind me up, Chuck, good to see ya. Hey, y'all need to get on this go-go Atlanta. Y'all sleeping on Bill Black, you got some go? Y'all better, y'all better get on this go-go. Why y'all listen to all this great? Nobody. DC, where you at? All right. DC. Turn it up here, let's go. Chuck Brown got me so tired, but next, don't try me next time. <laughs> don't do it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, DC was off the chain, and so was Riley. All right, we about to keep this thing going. I'm about to bring out my favorite, favorite female MC back in the day. Hey, and I need y'all to keep the energy going, all right? Y'all ready to have a good time? This front row, y'all so awesome. Thank y'all for coming. They scream, they excited. I love y'all energy. Y'all give it up. She needs no intro. One time for MC Live.
<laughs> How y'all doing? What a joy it is to be here with you all today. First off, I want to say thank you to AT&T. How about this? 28 days. 28 days, and I thank you AT&T for inviting me to become a part of this speaker series. Also, give it up for Ricky Smiley. So damn funny, it ain't fair. It's not fair. Um, I'd also like to thank you all, before I even begin, for just the years of support, the years of continued support for MC Light and all my endeavors and, and all that I love to do. You guys have been completely supportive of me, and I am a very appreciative for that, you know. I, oh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all are free to speak back to me. I like it. <laughs> I like it to be interactive, which, by the way, after I finish speaking, um, we're going to have a q and A. I think you can follow the directions that are happening behind me now if you want to text in any of your questions. And first, I just want to say how thankful I am to be here. I'm here today to talk to you about dreams. And what's so exciting for me is First off, we're living in a man's dream. When we talk about a man who dreamt of equality, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, we are living his dream right now. And, and I, am very, um, I am very excited to continue on with his legacy in mind. But also, I am living a dream. To actually be standing in front of you this evening and talking to you was a dream of mine not too long ago. But my mother was my only audience. And she believed in me. And that, and that was, that's of great importance for the, for the parents here today to believe in your children and give them any outlet that they can possibly have. Before I start this though, I wanted to read something that I found and I thought it was of, um, of great importance for me and I'm hoping that maybe it can touch one of you. And it's very short and concise, but it starts off, when there is anything you truly wish for, do not stand passively hoping that something may happen to make your wish come true. Go out and make that wish come true. Have the faith that you can, believe in the power that God has given you, and God will give you more. Know that all the good in the universe lies in the path of him who has faith and who will use the power of faith to make his own faith come true. He who only hopes, only hopes, will see visions of good things but will never reach them. But he who transforms his hope into faith and his faith into living works will reach every lofty goal he has in view to him. Nothing shall be impossible because God is with him. Yeah. Yes. That, that's from a book uh, called The Pathway of Roses by Christian D. Larson, and I look in that book often when I'm looking for inspiration. So as I stand here now in the midst of living my dream, I started many, many years ago with big hopes of being able to speak to people. And I got that vision, uh, actually, I know God gives us vision to see and, and only he can because then we know that it can be brought into fruition, but largely due to a mother who was extremely supportive. My mother had me in everything free. Who here is a parent? Okay. Everything free in New York City, I was at. I went to exhibits, I went to museums. She had me in art class, in dance class, in anything where she didn't have to pay. I, I was there. My name is Lana Moore, by the way, so oftentimes when I refer to myself as a little child, I'll say little Lana, because I'm grown now. Isn't that something how time flies? I will talk about time every now and again while I'm up here because time may act like a friend of ours, but it is not, and you had bet to be respectful of time because it will pass you in a flash. So I'm in all of these classes, but the most exciting thing for me was theater. My mother had a friend named Prince, and he looked nothing like the Prince we know. He was a dark of the berry, sweet of the juice type of prince. And he had silver gray hair. 
and he worked as a doorman at the Majestic Theater on Broadway. And um, every Tuesday, we would get the opportunity to go and check out a play. So I got to see Dream Girls, I got to see 42nd Street, I got to see Cats, I got to see Dracula, you know, because I don't know if you know this, but all the doormen in New York City, they're in the union, so they know one another. So they call up the next one, hey, I got two people coming, leave the back door open. So I was able to see all of these people take, take the stage in a way that, that made me excited. And I felt like they had voices. They inspired me to want to do and be somebody. And so I decided at a very early age that I too wanted to inspire people. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I knew some way and somehow I would find a way. And at this time I was about seven or eight years old. And the funny thing is my mom worked at North General Hospital in Harlem and I got to see all of these drug addicts walking in and out of rehabilitation trying to get their lives together. And I said, you know what, that, that's it. I will be able to speak to my generation about drugs and how they shouldn't be affiliated with drugs in any way. They shouldn't take them, they shouldn't deal them, they shouldn't date anyone who takes them or deals them. They should learn how to stay as far away from drugs as possible, so that became my mission. So now how was I gonna get the word out to all of these people, uh, to my generation? So I began to write. And it wasn't until now, you know, seven or eight years old, we're in the midst of what? Rapper's Delight, right? Mm -hmm. that, that was the song, it was uh, 77, 78, hip hop, hip it, hip it, hip it. Wait a minute, is hip hop in here? Because y'all look like the generation of hip hop that I grew up with. We got a couple of people here that might have just hit the scene. So when I say a hip hop, a hip and dip, a hip and dip. Hip hop, and you don't stop. I like it to the bang bang, but it's not jumping. To the rhythm of the. the yeah. Y'all scared me for a minute. I thought y'all was about to make this a roll, roll your boat scenario. Well, that was a song that certainly influenced me, but it was another one that I heard before that, which was Grandmaster Flash and the Grand Furious Master. Five. And Melly Mel was rapping about the streets. The he was rapping about the Bronx. Broken glass everywhere. People pissing in the station. No, they just don't, don't care. care. Can't take the smell. Now, when I heard him paint such a picture within his raps, that's what I was after. I wanted to be able to, to write a story and make people feel it and make people see it as it was happening. And then lo and behold, up next, my mic sounds nice, check one. My mic sounds nice, check two. Oh, when I heard salt and pepper, it was on and popping. Okay, now I needed to get serious. So up until then, I was writing rhymes in school, you know, having fun. But once I heard Salt and Pepper, I got serious about it because I knew that I really had a chance. So I became a part of a group. And this, we'll talk about working together in unity. I was part of a group called Pure Elegance, and my name was Sparkle. <laughs> Hold your laughter. <laughs> and my partner's name was Dazzle. <laughs> Oh, well, he couldn't tell us nothing. He was rocking rhymes. And, and that is where I was able to hone in the skill. And I began to write in this composition book, a black and white composition book, all of these rhymes and all of these poems. So when I finally got the call from a friend of mine that they were looking for a female MC to come and be a part of their record label, I said, oh, well, that, that, that's me. I'm ready. I'm ready. The opportunity was there and I was ready. I was practicing, I got my vocal up really strong because you know, really, I, I really talk like this if we was really just gonna be sitting and talking. But if I had to be a rapper, I had to be able to give it all I got and I had to be able to come from here and I had to be strong so that people would listen and know that I was serious about what it was that I was saying. Even though it could have been as monotone as all outdoors because that's just how it is with me. I practiced, so I was ready. So I went to that studio, and they said, what do you have? And I said, hmm, I cram to understand you. I have paper thin. 
I have light as a rock. Um, I had all of these rhymes ready since I was 12. So when they pulled out their music and I had my rhymes, and now this is four years after the time, I'm more than ready. I was more than ready and excited to show them what it was that I had. From there, I began to really take the dream underway and start to envision lots of things for myself. But as I, as I recited these rhymes for them, they, they were somewhat in awe. I don't think they thought that I would be prepared as I was. But at a very early age, I understood the power of words. And to give you an example, uh, in the morning, my mother would say to me, how are you? And I go, fine. She said, that's not good enough. Go give me another word out of the source. Fine wasn't good enough for her. She studied to be a teacher. So diction and enunciation was extremely important, which is why you understand everything that I say when I rhyme. <laughs> it is not designed by accident. It is very purposeful because my mother spent a lot of time correcting me while I was growing up. And of course at that point, oh my goodness, it used to get on my nerves, but my God, do I appreciate it now. Appreciated. It's about taking the time as, as adults to, to give that to our kids today, you know, to just take that moment of time. And even if it feels young ones that are in here, that someone is just pestering you, it's only because they want to see you be great. They want to see you be the best that you can possibly be. And so the power of words became really important to me. Even if I wanted to go to the hip hop club, I had to write an essay. Oh yeah, my mother wasn't playing, she was serious. Everything I wanted to do except for chores, I had to write an essay. If I wanted to go roller skating at the rink, why? Four paragraphs, give them to me. Go ahead, work on it and come back. If I wanted to go to the hip hop club, you know, I really appreciate my mom because she took her time with me. I am her only child. What is it called? I think one of the young ladies told me, one and done. My mother was a part of the one and done crew. My sister, however, he, however, is here in the house. My sister Lisa, I appreciate you for coming and showing your love to me always. So the power of words, I, I really want to go through it because um, we all have goals here. Have, have, we, have we all reached our goals? Not yet. Amen to that. And even when you reach one, there's another one to be, to be caught up with and another one to be caught up with. But let me tell you, there, uh, to have a big dream is to not be in vain. You've got to see the vision, but also you've got to work towards getting there and you've got to speak it. So if, if I say to you, whatever you say is true, would you believe that? Yes. So when I say, whatever you say, Whatever you say, you make it that way. That's how powerful we are. That's how he made us in his image. So when we say it, it is true. It is true. And so it's, I can't even stress to you how important it is what comes out of your mouth. And how we can't always just choose the easiest thing to say. It may be best just to not say anything at all at the time. And especially when it comes to gossip. Oh my. To talk about someone else is a complete waste of your time. Because we all just said we haven't reached the goals that we're aiming for. So that just takes away from the time that we can put towards reaching those goals. I'm going to break down time for you. Say it's 24 hours in a day, yeah? We sleep 7, 8 hours if we're lucky. Okay, so now that's bop down to 16 hours a day. You, you got to, uh, what they call it, um, uh, we got kids in the house, okay. You shave, you shower, and that other thing, right? That, that must be taken care of in the morning, and then if you're real good, you do it at night too. Thank you for all of you that do that twice a day. Okay, so that bops us down to what? Uh, 14 hours a day. You gotta eat morning, maybe middle of the day, maybe let's give that two hours, now we're down to 12. Some of us work eight hours a day, right? So like, yeah, yeah, some of us work, so eight, 12, that leaves us with four. Four hours, okay, you gotta commute. 
to get from here to there and everywhere in between. Let's give that another two hours. We're down to two hours in the day. Two hours in the day. You might get scandal in, because I know some of y'all are hooked. That's an hour of your time. And now we're down to an hour. I'm sure I left something out that you can do with that hour, huh? If you have kids, a whole new program. You don't have none of that time. You don't have any of that time. So to talk about somebody else, what they doing, where they been, how, who cares really? Who cares? You've got a game plan, I'm saying. A game plan. So I say, at this moment, we keep it all positive. All of the words need to be positive because what you say is true. And if ever you find yourself talking ill about someone else, know that you are putting it in your circumference. You are putting, you are making that true for you as well. Let's keep it positive. I found out the power of words very early. And two for that, before words come, is the power of thought. The power of thought is very important. Because what you think will be. What you think, will be. what you say, true. what you think. Oh my goodness, there's but so much space in there. So we gotta keep it all positive. There's no room for worry or doubt. This is when your faith has to come into play. When your faith has to come into play. And I say this to you because I had a thought at a very early age that I wanted to inspire people. My overall goal is to inspire people. So however, however it comes, that's how I wanna, that's how I wanna inspire people, right? So it just so happens for me that it happened through hip hop, which was really good, and I've been able to make it last and do some other things that I would remain relevant in your eye, and you would really give up two flying whatevers to be here to hear me say whatever it is that, that I wanna say. But I worked really hard to get to a certain point, and I can tell you at the height of my rap career, I was over it. I was done. I walked into a restroom, and a couple of people came in behind me, and I walked into the stall, and I could just hear, MC Light's in the bathroom, we gotta get a, we gotta get a picture when she comes out. Oh, MC Light's in the bathroom, we gotta get some autographs. Go call mama, MC Light's in the bathroom. <laughs> I said, Lord, I wish I could just change my face and walk out of this bathroom and they not even recognize me. No! 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 I imagine that's just how God felt. <laughs> Girl, are you kidding me? After you said you wanted this, that, and the third, that you wanted to be a household name, that you wanted people to listen to you when you spoke, that you wanted the respect from your peers, from your generation and beyond, nations to come, and you have the nerve to say to me that you wish you were unrecognizable? What a thought to have. Because then it, it became true. The weight, the heaviness of what it is that I asked for. And I didn't even have to speak it, it was just a thought. Is where it turned out to be. I just recorded a record. Spent nine months recording that record. That's a, that's a lot. Like, how many people are here creative beings? You create, you create, you create. We all create. It's, it's up to us whether we want to live it out and make sure that it, that it happens, but we get sort of bogged down with everyday life, forgetting about all those things that we love to do. The thing that you love to do when you were seven or eight are probably the things that you should be doing now that would inspire nations of people, bring you the money that you would need so you wouldn't have to do the thing that you're doing just to get paid. And that's keeping it real for you. So here I am now with the power of my jacked up thought <laughs> that got me in a place where I recorded a record for nine months. Soon as I recorded it, they sent me overseas. Who does that? I don't know. I think it was a terrible idea to send me overseas. I come back and they want to work on a new album. You want to work on a new album? I just did one. You're kidding me right now. Well, to, to my surprise, they felt as though there were too many records on this actual album, and rightfully so, which is something else that we all have to learn to do, is the, 
There is power in constructive criticism. You just have to trust enough that the person telling you that is really coming from a place of love and not just a place of power. So the A&R guy told me, you need to drop some of these songs from this record. And I was like, uh -uh, I'm too emotionally connected to all of these records, which by the way, we have longtime legendary producer Eddie F in the house produced and DJ for Heavy D from the beginning all the way until the end. God bless you, Eddie F. But you know what it's like. You get in there and you work and you work to make this record and then they tell you you need to cut nine of the songs you did. Are you kidding? I had LL on that record. I had Beanie Man. I had Missy. I had Total. I had the Neptunes. I had everybody and their mama on this record. And you want me to cut nine songs? And because of it, I learned a valuable lesson because in fact, I should have cut some of the songs. So taking constructive criticism is extremely important in whatever game you, whatever game that you're in. If someone can't tell you how to be better, well then damn, you need to just sit down because you're never gonna be the best if you can't take constructive criticism. I learned a valuable lesson through that whole ordeal. And I decided that I wanted to go elsewhere. So I picked up and I, I told the record label, you know what, I think it's time. I had been with them 13 years, and I, w I wanted to try something new. And at the time, Will Smith had a record label, and he said, Light, if you ever have an issue, come over to my record label. And I said, I'm on my way. I did a year of negotiation, because yes, really, that's how long it takes sometimes with record deals. I took a year to record, and in the third year, he lost his distribution deal. So now I'm out of the game, haven't recorded a record for about, I don't know, maybe four or five years. That's a long time for somebody to be gone in this rap game. You see how they come and go. They come in, and if, you, if you're good, you wind up staying, and if you're not, you're out. But for five years, so now I'm like, my God, all of it. All of it, just because of a thought. I started it for the female MCs. Do they have cocktails in the building? Because I'm just wondering. <laughs> I mean, I'll have one after, but I think she had one before. <laughs> Thank you very much for that acknowledgement. <laughs> I love you back and you must behave. <laughs> And so really, it took everything that I had to not be upset with me, right? To be upset with the decision that I had made because we talk about sacrifice a lot for what it is, the things that you want. And I sacrificed school to be MC Light, to, give, to, to be the best MC Light that I could be. I sacrificed school, but before that I had a plan. I was enrolled at Norfolk State University. I was going, I was majoring in communications, and at the last minute I get this record deal, and my mom's like, oh, I don't want you to go all the way down there. I want you to be closer to me. Can you go to school in New York City? So I enrolled at Hunter. I was at Hunter for two days before the record label said to me, we have a tour for you in Denmark with Rex in Effect and Audio 2. Are you gonna go? And I was like, hell yeah, we're going. I ain't stupid. <laughs> so I wind up going. But I tell you what, as a kid, and you you know, you all know it, whatever you see, you wanted to be, right? If you saw a teacher, you wanted to be a teacher. Then you went to the doctor's visit and you I want to be a doctor. Some of us wanted to be nurses, some of us wanted to be doctors. Or you see a fireman and a fire truck and you want to be a fireman. Anything that you saw you wanted to be. That was me. I wanted to be everything. And here I am, an MC, caught up with five years of not having a record out. And then let me tell you something. I guess it's just like a resume. When you go for your next position, they're looking to see what, what did you do in the last. Now remember that last record I had, we never even gave it a chance because you wanted me to record another one. So now if I go to shop for a deal, they're looking at it to tell me what I'm worth. Oh, well that last record, look, it didn't, it didn't do too well. 
Never mind the cold rocker parties and the keep arms and the paper thins and the lighters of rocks and the cha cha chas and the poor Georgies and the, and all of the stuff that I had contributed felt like it was gone. It di it didn't matter. I had the record label blues. But you know what Les Brown says, if you can look up, you can get up. I had to make a plan. I had to revamp, I had to reinvent, and I had to change my thoughts. I had to make them positive, beginning to end. And I had to surround myself with people who believed in me. Boy, if I don't have nobody, I got her.